Church member Len Harris is with us here this morning to make a brief presentation about what he's learned about almost unconditional love in his 93 years on this earth. So thank you, Len, for being with us this morning. Welcome to an exciting morning. <laughs> I first want to share how I started to become a Unitarian and what you would, uh, what you might believe or not believe at the age of four. Don't believe it. <laughs> it was because of my love of my big strong German Shepherd dog called Jack. He could let, I could lay down on his back while he walked down the street with me on his back. <laughs> After one block, he started wobbling. Who wouldn't? <laughs> and, and had to get off, I had to get off. And then an almost unbelievable thing came to my mind. I thought that if I liked a dog this much, I should like people as much or maybe more. I don't know how I came to think about it. It's unbelievable. But I remember it. I grew up seeking social justice for humanity. So thinking back, I felt like I was born a Unitarian while my parents were Jewish. And I still favor our philosophy here at our church. I am excited to share my view, or views rather, including almost unconditional love to all, especially to the children of the world, who we have sadly neglected. There are two main concepts of love. Conditional love is when one says to another, I want you to be as happy as possible as I see it as best for you. <laughs> that, that's the most dominant love that's been practiced throughout history and has kept us from achieving a better world in my view. Unconditional love is when one says to another, I want you to be as happy as possible the way you see it is best for yourself. Even if you wish to harm me or others, I will still offer my love. That's a tough one to practice, and the only ones I think that did that is Gandhi, Mark, Dr. Martin Luther King, and Nelson Mandela, but their, but their love didn't prevail. We're, we are facing the greatest threats to humanity at this point. I think I might have invented almost unconditional love without knowing others have. It is when one says to another, I want you to be as happy as possible from as many sources as possible, as you see it as best for yourself, with one exception, no imposing. I believe we try to practice this last here in our church. As long as you don't impose, I'll, I'll continue to love you. To fulfill our covenant to seek love and compassion for a healthy humanity and for a better world. We need to make children our top priority. If we don't enable young people 
to develop their potential creativity, I don't see much hope for a better future. <coughs> I propose that we activate a universal movement to enable students throughout the world, through quality education, to discover and develop their fullest creativity, including their potential interests, talents, skills, and creative relationships for enhancing themselves, humanity, and our supportive environment. I'm, I'm confident we can help implement this much needed and exciting project. In my research, I found that very often young people are capable of influencing adults as or more effectively than adults. The proof of this is through my research of, of young people who have done amazing things. I don't know if many of you have seen this book and know of Craig Kelberger. He's been nominated three times for a Nobel Prize. He started when he was 12 years old to stop, stop child slave labor in Asia. While he was there investigating the, the horrible situations from children who were injured or even died from what they were doing, he heard that the Prime Minister of Canada happened to be in the area. He wanted to have a nip a, an appointment with the Chancellor to let him know what he was finding out and to make a proposal. The Chancellor didn't want to see him. He says, I don't have time for a 13-year-old kid. The media was following Craig around and felt he had such an important message. They went to the Prime Minister and said, you've got to see this young man, he has something very important to share. The Prime Minister finally said, okay, I'll give him 15 minutes. Craig convinced the Prime Minister in that 15 minutes not to allow any products made by child slave labor to enter the country of Canada, where he lived. The Prime Minister finally agreed and submitted the legislation that passed unanimously and no products made by child slave labor can enter the, the government of Canada. Uh, <clears throat> another amazing young person, Malayla, her, in her middle teens, she survived an attempt to kill her for promoting girls to get an education. If you remember, she won a Nobel Peace Prize and made an, an address to the United Nations. An amazing young lady. Another a great book, Kids' Guide to Social Action. Barbara Lewis presents what children have done around the world in resolving personal and social problems that adults were having a tough time either resolving or didn't even know about. These books I have for sale or, or loans out in the foyer. Let's get together to share our values after this service and find a way to a better world. I thank you and Reverend Rebecca for this exciting opportunity. Thank you.